would first puncture the Nazi homeland was reactivated at Fort Benning, Georgia. Ahead for the fourth lay months, years of reorganization and training. The division, like the nation, had to prepare to meet a new kind of threat, to fight a new kind of war. This was the beginning. In July 1942, the division was pulled out of the mammoth Carolina maneuvers and alerted for overseas. Instead, the men were sent to more training. At Camp Gordon Johnston on Florida's Gulf Coast, they received painstaking instruction in a new technique, amphibious assault. By now, other American outfits had fought in North Africa, in Sicily. Mussolini had fallen, Italy surrendered, and still the fourth trained on friendly beaches. These men could not know that the gap was closing between them and a day not yet on their calendars, an hour not on the clocks. D-Day, H-Hour. After final preparation and staging in England, the 4th Division learned what all the training was for. The greatest invasion armada in history was to storm Fortress Europe. The 4th was one of two American spearheads. Ultimately, the total effort of a combat machine is concentrated at the cutting edge. The spearhead must be so hard that it will not blunt, so resilient that it will not crack, and it must endure. To paraphrase a famous statement of the time, much had been given to the 4th Division in preparation, now much would be asked. The time is D-Day, June 6, 1944, H-Hour. For the Third Reich, the hour is late. The 8th Regiment put the first troops ashore at Utah Beach. It was a model landing at Utah, achieving immediate success at minimum cost in casualties. The troops pushed inland quickly. One immediate objective was to reach isolated 82nd Airborne paratroopers who controlled a beachhead artery at San Mary Glees, six miles away. By the end of the second day, the fourth had carried out its first critical assignment. We had a beachhead. Now we needed a port. The division's assignment, 
expand the beachhead, and secure the vital port of Cherbourg. Now it was bitter going. towns fell despite tenacious and costly enemy resistance. By the last week in June, the fourth was in Cherbourg. While it cleaned out the last Nazi pockets, engineers at once began restoring the port city. essential. General Patton's swift striking Third Army had to be brought in through here and assembled. The fourth was assigned to pave the way for the build-up, to clear the Cotentin Peninsula. The assignment had a built-in obstacle course. Hedgerows, they were called. They divided farm plots about every hundred yards. Frenchmen built them, Germans used them. Americans had to take them. week in July, the Nazis were out of the peninsula and the third army was in it, waiting to break out. The hole was to be made somewhere along the Sandlow line with a powerful assault by the first army. The fourth division was one of the spearheads. The breakout operation began with a saturation aerial bombardment. One Ivy Regiment moved out at H hour. This was seven weeks, four and a half hours after the landing in Normandy. Until this moment, Allied gains had been limited and expensive. Now we were going for all of France. The enemy knew what was at stake and fought fanatically. But by the end of a week, his line was fractured and the Third Army began rolling south. The 4th's 22nd Regiment received a presidential citation for opening up the Nazi lines. At the same time, strategic Villa Dieu fell to the division. The drive was picking up momentum now. We were picking up more information about the recently departed Nazis. geographical key in demolishing the Nazi defense system. One final stronghold remained for the fourth, saint -Pois. Even as this spearhead division passed through town, the G.I. saw the transformation taking place. Signs went quickly. They were no longer needed. The Germans were gone. They weren't coming back. 
down swastika, up tricolor. After one desperate counterattack, Nazi resistance faded and the way was open all the way to Paris. With the 2nd French Armored Division, the 4th was ordered to liberate the city. For these visitors, the heady experience of transforming captive Paris to gay Paris. The 4th 12th Regiment entered Paris at midnight. By noon, it had reached the heart of the city and the hearts of its people. One trouble with spearheads, they don't linger for victory parades. They move on. From Paris, the advance was breathtaking. 50 miles and more some days across northern France and Belgium. All the while, everyone wondered just how tough is the vaunted Siegfried line. A 4th Division patrol was the first Allied unit to set foot on Nazi Germany. The time is September 11th. The next day, the division crossed the frontier in force and soon had bucked into the Siegfried Line. However, it developed that the full strength of the 1st Army was needed. Early in November, the 4th pushed into the Hurtgen Forest, new terrain for the veterans of the beachhead and hedgerows. The Hurtgen was a maze of bridges and Nazi defense lines. After 19 days of bitter fighting, the division rammed through to the other side. The Ivy men moved on to Luxembourg, just as the Nazis burst through in their desperate Ardennes offensive. The German assault slammed into four isolated companies of the 12th Regiment. Beyond them was a treasure house of supplies and the roads to France. But the 4th Division units held firm, then counterattacked. Then it became a matter of shrinking the bulge. After the Nazis' last desperate bid crumbled, the 4th joined in the final assault on Germany. Its advance turned to pursuit. It pierced across the Rhine to Würzburg and Rutgen. Then it struck southeast to the Danube. Then on to Munich. The spearhead was six miles from the Austrian border on VE Day.